I want to come to you, Hainu, first, as a journalist who's tracked this story for, for a long time of Manipur. When you see this destruction, the death taking place, are you losing hope? Uh, uh, Rajdeep, thank you, first of all, for having me. Hope, of course, if we don't have hope, we wouldn't be here at all. But when I look at it, I don't think in all the years that I've seen the violence all through my years of, you know, growing up and seeing the violence, I don't think I've never seen a magnitude, or, you know, a, a violent of this magnitude. So it is a little difficult to say that we have... Uh, I mean, there is definitely hope, but it's difficult to understand how long is it going to take for people to bounce back. The magnitude of violence and the number of life lost and the number of people who are displaced, uh, students whose education have suddenly come to a halt, it has touched every aspect of life for everybody. So it is difficult to really understand how are we going to bounce back. So the question now really is, how do we rebuild? How do we bounce back? How do we restore? How do we deal with the trust deficit which is going on right now? Is, is that what it is at the core, according to you, a trust deficit? That cookies have lost faith in metes and metes have lost faith in cookies? Is that at the heart of this? Well, trust, we have, uh, we, uh, I would have imagined that when the first incident broke out on the 3rd of May. I would have imagined that if we had a functioning government, uh, I wondered if something was done at that point of time, would it escalate if I look back, if mm -hmm. we look back and reflect. Mm -hmm. The trust deficit, I think it's on every, every aspect. I think there is a mutual distrust at the moment. And of course, well, without denying, I'm sure people are also a little apprehensive about what is the state doing and more importantly, what is the center doing? We are almost, uh, we, we've crossed over a month now and, uh, there, don't, um, and there isn't any, any sign of things cooling down. So it is, I mean, I, I would like to ask where are we headed right now? And well, who is, let, me, I mean, let me ask that isn't question. Isn't the country watching? Isn't the people in the authority watching? You know, I, I've kept the politicians yeah. out of this because politicians can polarize any debate. And this is not a time for polarization, but for solutions. General Konsam Himalay Singh, should the Indian state, the government of Narendra Modi at the center and the state government of Biren Singh now break, in some way be seen to be more proactive? Amit Shah ji spent three days there, but many believe it was too little too late. He went five weeks after the violence broke out. So what's the solution? Is President's rule a solution? What's the solution? Thank you very much um, uh, for the invitation. Uh, Razdev, the first thing I would like to say is that the solution is a very, very uh, distant kind of a dream right now. Mm -hmm. uh, we have to think about the short and the long-term solutions. Mm -hmm. So I would say that I'll cover the long-term solutions because what we are facing today is a legacy of last 75 years or even more than that. And there have been a continuous, I mean, faulty uh, narratives, faulty uh, laws, and uh, also very uh, significant uh, divide amongst the people, particularly in Manipur, and, and in Northeast India in general. No, but sir, can I stop you for a moment to say that 18 months ago when elections were held or 12 months ago, the situation was peaceful. It appeared even Armed Forces Special Powers Act was being lifted from Manipur. There was hope. What has suddenly changed in the last 12 months? Okay, that's a very interesting question. I would say that things were uh, under the surface they were divide already building up for number of years in fact decades and what has actually uh, happened in the last uh, 40, 40 days or so is a result of um, sudden uh, activities and also people talk about you know various issues like you know uh, uh, civil tribe demand then, you know, uh, these illegal immigrants and all that. These are actually, I think, they are not the real reason. They might have been... Uh, so what's the real reason? What, according to you, is the real reason? 
I mean, people are talking about, you know, Hindu, Christian, no, nothing. It has nothing to do with religion. It has nothing to do with even a tribal, non-tribal narrative. What I would say, it is about, uh, the reason is the, uh, the legacy of the past, as I said, which have, we have, not, I, I, I will blame most of the governance issue and also various laws and various customary laws which are at uh, odds with the uh, you know uh, indian constitution or even uh, with uh, with the uh, with the traditional laws of uh, various uh, uh, cultures mm -hmm. of the people there we have 36 communities or 36 uh, tribes there so the the biggest the mm -hmm. biggest problem i see there is because of the uh, the situation there that we have got a porous border there have been histories of you know neighbors like unstable neighborhood we have history of china and then is pakistan having supported so many insurgent groups